Today's video, I wanna talk about a really important issue related to the Corvette. Now, obviously this issue applies to all C5 Corvettes, but I think it even applies to C6 Corvettes as well. So if you own a Corvette, or you're looking to own one, make sure you're aware of this issue because basically if it goes unaddressed or unnoticed, it could do some serious damage to the car. I mean, I'm talking thousands of dollars worth of damage. Now, I'm not one to make big claims on video titles and whatnot and big clickbait stuff, but this video is well deserving of this title because like I said, it's a big issue and if it goes unnoticed, it will do a lot of damage to the car. Um, and I'm still learning a lot about this car. You know, I came from Mercedes, so I knew a lot about those cars, and now I'm starting to learn a lot more about the Corvettes, and in particular the C5, and there's certain things that, you know, common problems, stuff like that. So I'm learning new things every day with this car, and I'm in a few owners groups, uh, especially on Facebook, and a gentleman posted a video. Um, his channel is called Toys for Life C5, so credit to him for making me aware of this problem but he posted a video about the batteries related to this car. Now, just like any other car, the C5 Corvette uses a lead acid battery to power all of the electronics in this car. Now, part of the problem is the battery itself, but the other big problem, particular to this car, and I think, like I said, the C6 as well, um, is the location of where the battery is in the car and what is underneath the battery tray. So instead of me just talking about it, I'm gonna go ahead and pop the hood on the car and show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so with the hood popped, I can show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. Now, if you don't own a Corvette yet, or you haven't really ever wrenched on your own Corvette yet, this is something really important for you to go inspect right now if you own the car or on every car you are looking at possibly buying. So under the engine bay of the C5 and C6 Corvette, the battery is located on the passenger side of the engine bay. Okay, so working our way over to the passenger side of the engine bay, this is the area you're gonna wanna be looking in and to inspect for this problem. So normally your battery sits right here and this is one of your main fuse boxes. You can see this space is empty because my old battery is long gone out of the car. I ripped this thing out the minute I noticed this problem after watching Toys for Life's video about the battery problem with these cars. So luckily I caught this issue really early on nothing serious has occurred so that's why i wanted to post this video to share my experience with you guys so that you guys can hopefully catch it early on your car or any cars you're looking at possibly buying so basically what the problem is is obviously the batteries themselves but also the battery battery's location in proximity to other parts in the car so essentially what happens is, is over time, lead acid batteries can start to leak. They'll leak out of the top parts of the battery and other areas as well, depending on their age and their, their condition. But basically, they will start to leak battery acid down the side of the battery and onto the tray. So you can actually see right here and right here, this is a little bit of battery acid that had started spilling out. And the main problem that happens with this car when these batteries start leaking is if they leak enough, this right here in the middle, that is your frame rail. And then all these wiring uh, harnesses right here, your main engine computer is right down there. It's hard to see, but it's right down there. Um, so if you basically let this go on unnoticed or it starts leaking for too long of a period of time, the battery acid will start draining down. It'll cause extreme corrosion on your frame rail and it'll seriously damage uh, your wiring harness for your ECM and all these wires down here. And this is a main wiring harness, so this is something you definitely don't wanna have to replace. So what I'm gonna do as a precautionary measure before I put my new battery in is, um, I got some baking soda, so I'm gonna basically just create a little slurry and kind of just spread it over here and over there um, to basically neutralize the battery acid to keep uh, prevent it from corroding anything further. I actually think this battery tray is actually plastic so I don't think it'll actually corrode the tray, it's just a matter of when it starts leaking down. Um, but I'm still gonna throw a little baking soda on there and then clean this really well to make sure I get rid of all of the residual acid that has spilled out. So it's a very straightforward problem to look for. Um, you can kind of already see it with the battery in the car, but you'll really see how bad it is if you just take the battery out really quick. You basically have your one mounting bolt here and then your two terminals that you need to take off of the battery. 
Now my old battery is obviously gone. I traded it in when I got my new battery so I didn't have to pay that core charge, but I did take a few pictures of the battery of what it looked like when I took it out of the car before I brought it to the parts store. And it's very subtle, so you gotta look hard, but you'll just basically see a little bit of wetness and just drippage, <laughs> if that's a word, coming out the side and top of the battery. Now you're probably wondering now, okay cool, I know where to look for for the problem, what do I do if my battery is leaking and whatnot? Well if it is leaking, rip it out of the car right away, get that thing out of there um, and start cleaning the acid. Either use some baking soda or just some nice uh, cleaner to really clean the tray and all the areas around it to get rid of any residual acid depending on how bad the battery was leaking. Now after inspecting your car and, or inspecting a car you're looking at buying, you might say, I didn't notice anything leaking, I think it's good to go, I'm just gonna leave it. My battery's a year old, blah blah blah, I'm just gonna leave it. I think that if you don't have the preferred type of battery for this car, you should replace it regardless if it's leaking or not. Now in my experience with car batteries, typically because I live in a not harsh climate where our temperatures aren't fluctuating a lot, like if you live in a climate where you get below freezing, that's a lot more toll on the battery, so it's not gonna last as long, but for me living in Southern California, I find that typically my car batteries last roughly four to five years depending on if it's a weekend car or a daily driver as well. Now the battery I had in this car was really only like two and a half years old. I got it in November of 2018, really when I first got the car. Um, so it was a pretty new battery and for the most part when I wasn't driving the car, it was on a battery tender. So the battery was in good health, it didn't have any issues cranking over or anything like that. So that's why I was really shocked to see after watching Toys for Life's video about this issue on the cars, going out to check out my car, I was kind of caught off guard saying, wow, it's actually leaking battery acid. Especially if your battery is really old, replace it, but even if you have a new one, it might suck because you might have just paid for it, but bite the bullet and get the right type of battery because over time, these standard lead acid batteries will start to leak. Now, what I'm gonna talk about now is what type of battery you should get for the car. Now this is the type of battery you want to get for this car. Now I obviously got the Optima brand of battery, I'm not sponsored or anything, it's just they're, they make awesome batteries and this was a battery that was available locally to me. Now this isn't like your standard lead acid battery, this is what's called an AGM battery. It's still lead acid but it's an AGM lead acid battery. Now I'm not an expert in batteries or electronics, but I did do a little bit of research um, on this type of battery and why this is the correct type of battery to use for your car. Basically an AGM battery is an absorbent glass matte battery. Now AGM batteries really came to be popular in the 1980s since they are now sealed lead acid batteries and they were used heavily for military aircraft, vehicles, and actually UPS in a lot of their delivery trucks to reduce weight and actually improve reliability and durability of the battery. So in this battery, it still has the sulfuric acid and it's actually absorbed by a very fine fiberglass mat that essentially makes the battery spill proof. Now for logistics purposes, that actually meant shipping was a lot easier because you didn't have to deal with hazardous material restrictions. So in AGM batteries, the plates that pair with the sulfuric acid to create the transfer of electrons can be made in you know, a flat shape to resemble you know, a standard flooded lead acid battery or in a rectangular case, or they can also be wound into a cylindrical cell, which if I'm not mistaken, that's what the Optima battery is. So you can kind of see those cylindrical cells. So that's where your uh, spirals of the fiberglass mat is located. Basically, AGM batteries are just a lot more robust than your standard flooded lead acid battery. They're gonna hold up a lot longer, they're able to withstand colder temperatures, they're able to be deep cycled, they can be charged up a lot easier than your standard lead acid battery. And also, a big plus with these is they do not leak because of that absorbent glass material. So this is definitely the type of battery that what you want to use for your Corvette based on performance and also the proximity of where the battery is in location to some very critical uh, wiring harnesses and obviously the frame of the car as well. 
So you do not want your battery to start leaking. So the best way to do that is to just fork over the extra cash. These are a lot more expensive. I basically paid $220 after tax uh, for this battery. So they're more expensive than your standard battery. It came with a three year warranty, um, but it's just, it's great peace of mind knowing that you have the right battery for this car. It's not gonna leak and cause all sorts of damage on your precious Corvette. So I just wanted to discuss this in a video real quick to basically just show you guys how you can look and inspect your car to see if it's happening you can address it quickly to avoid costly damage down the road or obviously if you're looking to buy a c5 that's something you can add to your inspection list when you're looking at all the different cars to possibly purchase because these cars are 20 years old now so who knows how many batteries they've had uh, installed and uninstalled in the cars and what the condition of the battery is based on you know how old it is or the type of climate uh, the car was in or how often the car was driven but regardless regardless of how new if it's a brand new battery it kind of sucks you you can obviously get away with it for a little bit a new battery is going to be a lot less prone to leaking but at some point when you have the cash uh, invest in a good quality AGM battery to avoid any potential problems with uh, battery acid leaking down onto that wiring harness or the ECM or your frame rail because you don't want a compromised frame rail. So if you guys have any questions about this topic related to the Corvette and the battery, feel free to leave a comment or question in the comment section below and I'll be happy to answer them to the best of my knowledge. Or if you're someone who has a Corvette and you've gone through this problem or you know more about it, leave your uh, feedback or experience in the comment section below and I'm sure other people will learn from you as well. Um, so this is just again another video of me learning more about this car, learning about the platform and the ins and outs of it and the common problems to look out for. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, found it somewhat educational and informative and if you guys liked it definitely consider subscribing for a lot more content to come. Got some big things that we need to do on the Corvette here and I have some exciting equipment coming in the mail that will really up the ability of, for me to work on this car in the garage. So. Like I said, subscribe for more content to come. This Corvette build, we're in the thick of it. We're having fun with it, and I'm excited to get this thing back on the road and actually drive it once again. So thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have an awesome rest of your day. And other than that, I will see you in the next